be no death ready when Jesus comes. There'll be no death ready when Jesus comes. There'll be no death ready. Let's ask people that side. God is good. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, really, God is good. It is always good to sit at the feet of Jesus. The feet of Jesus is safe, and it is at the feet of Jesus where we find solace and comfort from his word. Uh, for us, before we pray, I'd like to share with the church this morning from the book of John, chapter 5, a famous, a, a famous narrative uh, that we, we are familiar with, uh, but I pray that today it gives, we get new perspectives that will even encourage us. John chapter 5, we are going to read from verse 1. John chapter 5. After this, there was a feast of the Jews. Jesus went up to Jerusalem now there in Jerusalem by the sheep gate, a pool which is called in Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In this lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. For the angel went down at a certain season into the pool and stirred up the water. Whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there, Jesus knew he had already been in that condition a long time. He said to him, do you want to be made well? The sick man answered and said to him, say, I have no man to put me into the water when the water is dead up. While, 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 I step, while I put my foot first, someone also does that first before, I'm, before I come. Jesus said to him, Arise, take up your bed, and walk. And immediately, took, immediately the man was made well. He took up his bed and walked, and that day was the Sabbath day. Let us pause for a moment of prayer. Lord, we thank you for your word. As we get into the word, we pray that you open our eyes and you give us understanding of your word. In Jesus we pray, it. amen. We're in the book of John, John chapter 5. We, we all know that the, the book of John is, is one of the gospels that, that we have written by John, a friend of, of Jesus. The book of John it's very important in that the book of John proves to us that Jesus was not only the Messiah, but that Jesus was divine. That Jesus, in his mission, he was born to die. And when John, when John records John the Baptist seeing Jesus, John the Baptist says, Behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. But I want us to just have a discourse on chapter 5 of the book of John. The, the Bible says there was a pool in Jerusalem called the Pool of Bethesda. We, we all know that the, the word Bethesda or the name Bethesda means the house of mercy. It, it was the house of mercy, but in the house of mercy, there were people who had different conditions who were waiting for the moving of the water. Let me get into class a bit. We know that the, the original language of the New Testament, we, we do not have the verse that says an angel steered up the water at a certain season. Even Ellen White in Desire of Ages, she says it was a common belief that an angel went down at a certain season and stirred the water. Now, but even though it was a common belief, people still came looking for help. And I ask myself, how can it be a house of mercy when people who are there are looking for mercy, but they don't get mercy? Ellen White says, some they will crawl to the pool, they will crawl and die by the, by the brink of the pool. Now, some were close to help, but died far away from help, 
You can be in the right place and still die far from the solution. The right place does not necessarily mean that you will get the help you are looking for. The Bible says there is this man who is there for 38 years. Bible students know that Jesus died between the age of 32 and 33 years. If this man had been in the pool for 38 years, it means this man's condition was older than Jesus. Before Jesus was born, the man was already by the pool of Bethesda waiting for the movement of the water. And Jesus comes to this man. He says, Sir, do you want to be made well? Listen to the answer. He says, There is no man to put me in the water when the water is troubled. People don't fail at school here in Paraton because they don't have the answers. But they fail exams because they've got many answers that are wrong. You, 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 you see, the question is not so much about his condition. Jesus did not ask him, is there a man that will help you? He simply asked him a question, do you want to be made well? It is like Jesus coming to Muilo and says, Muilo, do you want to pass meds? And I say to him, Lord, meds is so difficult. The question was not how hard meds is, but the question was, do you want to, be, do you want to pass? Now, I want us to, to notice this. The false, the basis of false religion in this world today is that religion that is instrument based. The water was not healing, but the water was the instrument of healing. There are people who come to church not for Jesus, but they come to church because of the instrument of Jesus. They are least interested in the owner of the religion, but they are more interested in what the religion can do. Africans, what makes us not to grow, to remain stagnant, is not our condition, but it is the conditions of the mind that we have accepted. Now, now, now the, 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 in, the water was the instrument. The owner of the instrument is in front of him, but he still wants the instrument instead of the owner. He says there is no man, but a man is standing in front of him. I want you to notice how Jesus heals this man. Jesus heals this man differently from all other healings that Jesus did. Remember, when he met a blind man, he touched his eyes. When he, he met the, the, the man that had leprosy, he touched him. But Jesus does not touch this man. He does not speak, he does not address himself to the condition of the man. But Jesus, instead, he speaks to the man. The man was carried by the mat. Jesus sees that the problem is not his condition, but the problem is that this man has accepted to sit in the mat. You see, you see, you see the, Ellen White says in the book, Ministry of Healing, many don't die because of their diseases, but they die because they've accepted diseases in their heads. What, what makes us as Africans to remain where we are, it is because we have accepted the mentality of defeat. Our mindset is wrong. When the mindset is wrong, even the practice becomes wrong. Remember, a Dr. Masu, one of my lecturers at school, says, when we've got a defective theology, even the praxis itself becomes defective. The issue was not the man's condition, but the issue was him being satisfied to be where he is. Allow me to suggest and say to all of us, God has called us to be, some, to be someone in the future, but not to be accepted or not to accept substandard conditions. There are people who are satisfied with mediocrity. They say even if I can just pass and get a C, it's fine when other people are getting A's. You see, the problem was not the man. The problem, he was satisfied to be carried by the man. Then Jesus notices that, no man, the problem is not the man's condition, but the problem is the man. Jesus does not touch him, does not speak to his condition. He speaks to the man. He says, take your mat and go. The man was carrying him. But after he meets Jesus, he is no longer being carried by the mat, but he is carrying the mat. The problem is the mat, and Jesus does not remove the mat. That's where the message is. 
I'm here to tell you that some of our problems Jesus will not remove. Amen. But he will give us an ability to carry our problems. The mat was not removed. This man, for 38 years, the mat became a summary of his life. When people saw him, who was carried by the mat, but now having to go home, carrying that which used to carry him, what is it that is carrying you this morning? Jesus will give you an ability to carry your problem. Let me tell you something. There is an, a story of an old pastor and a young minister is told. This young minister comes to this retired pastor. He says to him, Pastor, I've got a problem. I am not a patient man. Can you please pray for me to be patient? The old man kneels down and prays and says, Oh, Lord Jesus, I pray that you increase problems in this young man's life. And, and, the, and, and the young minister opened his eyes and said, Pastor, I said you must pray for patience. Then the old man says, patience and afflictions, the Bible says, brings about patience. Therefore, there is no other way except problems. I want to tell you, all of us without problems will become arrogant people who don't need Jesus. Now, when, 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 when this young man was prayed for, the old man says, I pray that you increase the problems so that it is when we are in trial that we notice that it is in trial that God has a blessing for us. It is in the book of Job, Job chapter 2, verse 10. He says, he knows the way that I take. When he has tried me, I shall come forth as gold. Gold is tried in fire. Let me say to all of us, the question that Jesus asked, do you want to be made well, was the right question, but it got the wrong answer because the one who gave the answer was not ready for the question. Let me close it this way. I grew up in Soweto. Um, the next time you visit South Africa, please come to Soweto. Uh, because if you visit South Africa and you have not been to Soweto, you have not been to South Africa. South Africa begins in Soweto and ends in Soweto. <laughs> that's, where everything, that's where everything happens. So in Soweto, Soweto today, if I give you a crash course for free, Soweto means the southwestern township. It means Soweto is it, it is in the southwest of Johannesburg. Now, it is the city. Now, normally people who are from Johannesburg, they think that they've arrived, they've got at times the mentality that they are the most cleverest people in, in, in South Africa. And of course, I grew up in that culture that says, I am the, the person because I am from Soweto and Soweto is in me. And it happened that I had a friend. This friend was coming from the Eastern Cape rural areas. Now, in South Africa, we see a person from the rural areas by many things. One, Guys who are from the city, they know how to match when they are dressed. Now, when we are dressed, you don't wear a black, a black trouser and a white sock. There is something wrong. You at least, at least need to learn to match. This boy came with a, 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 a three-quarter pen. Then we knew that he is not from around. He became my friend. We, we wrote a test. He was sitting next to me. We were very close. As, as we were writing a test in primary school, this guy was struggling. Uh, was struggling up until I said to him, because you are my friend and we are sitting together, copy, copy. I opened my book, I said like this, so that he writes as well. As I write the right answer, he writes it. But now, when the teacher came back with the scripts, he says there is this Mame Lomu Yula that writes the same test and he gets the same mark and he writes in two different uh, handwritings and writes the, the same paper twice in different ways. It means the young man did not only copy the wrong answers, he also copied and even copied my name. He copied, he copied faithfully. It is in the Bible where God says, I set before you life and death, therefore choose life, but the people are still choosing death. Jesus is the only professor that sets a question paper and tells you the right answer. He asks you a question and he says, I said before you life and death. Therefore, the correct answer is what? Is life. But people are so foolish that they still choose death. You see, in the story of John chapter 5, God is teaching us how to give correct answers when questions are put to us. That, that man was simply asked, 
Do you want to be made well? He says, there is no man when the man himself is standing. I don't know what kind of an answer this morning you have for Jesus. He is asking you, whatever your problem that you are facing this morning, do you want to have success? I know some of you are going to go for exams. Let me take you into confidence, but don't tell people that I've told you. I, I, I did not like Hebrew in the name of Jesus. I, I was not good with Hebrew. Eh? Hebrew. It was a nightmare to me. And it was even worse. I was taught by a man from Egypt. He, when he spoke, the man was Hebrew. When he walked, he's Hebrew. When he came here, there, you would know the man is Hebrew, his Old Testament. And hey, we wrote, I remember writing, I'll never tell you the mark. I, I used to fail and pass, so I had mixed, mixed results in it. Up until I decided one day, I asked myself, why are the others passing and I'm failing? And later on, I discovered when I started asking that question and giving it the right answer, that's when I began to pass. The problem was not Hebrew, but it was the condition of the mind. The problem with this man was not his disability, but he had accepted disability in his head. Whatever we are going through, it is one of the statements by Mandela when he says, for us to completely eradicate apartheid, it is when we accept the mentality in our minds that we are not slaves or oppressed people. Remember, when he left prison, they asked him a question. You stayed 27 years in prison. Why are you not angry at those who kept you in prison? He said, had I left prison bitter and angry, even after being released, I would remain a prisoner that is free. Most of us are here. We are prisoners of our own minds when God has given us abilities to excel. Why is it that in Africa we always wait for the West to come and donate for us? When we have minds sitting in front of me, I'm looking for a mind that in the future will go and donate to, to Europe and America. Why? Africans are always on the receiving end because in their minds they've accepted that they are a charity case. I am not a charity case and you are not one. God has given us minds to excel. The question is, do you want to be made well? I want to pray with someone that says, I have passed, I'm going through some times and I'm happy to know I, I, I am, I'm happy I'm an Adventist preacher. I'm not a Pentecostal preacher. Not that I hate Pentecostals, but I'm not here to tell you that next year is your year. There will be no problems, but I'm here to tell you that as a child of God, even problems will become even more. And at times when you pass through those problems, God will not remove those problems, but he will give you the ability to go through those problems. If you are passing through a tough time and you are asking God to give you an ability to move with your problems and be able to go through successfully. Please stand up with me as I pray with you. <clears throat> Let us pray. Our, own, our dear Heavenly Father, we, we come before you. We, we recognize that our greatest battle is the battle of the mind. We have come here, Lord, you are asking a simple question today. Do you want to be made well? At times, our successes and our failures are all based on how we are going to answer this simple question. We pray that, Lord, this morning, help us to give right answers when right questions are being asked to us. We want to pray, Lord, for your people at the university here. We have come from different walks of life with a desire to pursue education. Allow us, Lord, not to accept mediocrity. Others, we are coming from different faculties. It might be a pastor, a theologian, starting to be a pastor. Allow us, Lord, not to get in mediocre grades. Allow us, Lord, even when we stand to minister to your people, 
not to be ordinary preachers who are satisfied with nothing and nothing is good for them. We pray that, Lord, allow us not to be those kind of ministers. Allow us, Lord, when we do our work, we excel, Lord. Little is much, Lord, at times when we give you our all, you are able to do the rest. I want to pray, Lord, also for the staff members that are here. God has put them in this place so that they can shine by touching the lives of many people that are here. You have given them the ability to touch the world in a way that they cannot match. Be with us, Lord Jesus, and take care of us during this day. We give our lives anew to you. In Jesus we pray. Amen.